So we're back again, and here is what we were obliquely talking about. If we wonder what the hell we were talking about, that is the sun dog, like a little rainbow um, just to the right of the sun, and it's out of view, but there's probably another one to the left of the sun. Uh, so that, that's a partial sun dog. So uh, we're just going to round up. Uh, this is going to be a shorter episode because it's getting cold. So we're just going to round up um, some elements of that first, first question. Then we're going to go into a, a part three and we're going to start getting more into the uh, retroactive jealousy angle because that kind of puts a whole new spin on everything. So we're going to swing back to Gwendolyn who's still got a uh, cool dude shades on. <laughs> so uh, just to, to kind of quickly recap then. So um, so you were talking uh, first of all about uh, you know the situation where the partner gets uh, gets to meet the family, mm -hmm. which is difficult for you know a scary thing for, yeah. for most relationships. But when there's this kind of hidden knowledge, mm. the shared knowledge, that that adds an extra element to it. Then you've got this whole kind of um, energetic mess of the family dynamic because where there's secrets and where there's abuse, there's all kinds of grubby, mucky, awkward, difficult things. Mm, absolutely. And then you described, um, you know, the disclosure of the sexual abuse and the effect that it has on the partner as a as a cluster bomb. Mm. So, um, do you want to pick up where you left off? Yeah, I'm not sure what more I can say about that really, because it is different for everybody. Everyone will have their own experience of this painful um, reality. Um, but I think what's really important in terms of if anyone's watching this and thinking that uh, this is us, this is this is me and my partner is to first of all have you know extreme compassion for each other in in processing this information it's huge you know this stuff mm. does not make sense it you know sometimes i hear my patients um try to make sense of the abuser's mind and that's a kind of no win uh that's just there's just no there's no point there's no hope in that it's kind of you mean kind process. of trying to work out why is that yes yeah. exactly and the, and the motives and why why would anyone do that and and those are all valid questions but i think you know just don't get lost down the rabbit ho those kinds of rabbit holes um be patient with one another recognize that if you're a partner of someone who's experienced that kind of abuse that by telling it's a bit like digging the scab a little bit so right. they may well feel a bit triggered and like they're revisiting it in, in having disclosed something so bravely to you so you, you know you might need to give them some space and be really patient with that process and not panic as well that that they might be suddenly a bit more shaky than you've maybe ever seen them before right. but actually that could just be because they've just disclosed it to you yeah. and they don't yeah. know what you're going to do with that information so it's a big deal fears? what might their fears be at that point though? so for the person who who was originally the victim in the, the kind of first victim if you will I think, yeah, as I say, it's a scary thing to, to have to disclose, you know, to, or to feel the, the desire to disclose to someone because you love them and you don't want to hide that aspect for, of your life from them any longer. Usually, I, in my experience with patients, it's not something that comes out, you know, immediately. It takes some time for people to feel safe enough right. for that. Yeah. And again, you know, I would say for the partners not to feel offended by that, like, oh, they've kept this secret from right. me, you know. Because they might feel excluded or not Absolutely. Trusted. Absolutely. Like, why didn't you trust me to tell me earlier? Why didn't you, you know, how could you keep this from me? You know, I would say for the partner, again, be just, just, you know, if you can just imagine what that might feel like. And I think for those people who have experienced such abuse, it's, it's the kind of thing, particularly if someone's worked through quite a lot, you don't really necessarily want to go back to that. You don't necessarily want to revisit it. But it, you know, it's actually a, a, a testament to the to their great love for you if they've chosen to disclose it. And remember, you know, it's absolutely their right whether to disclose or not to disclose, and to whom they disclose. The so, victim always holds on to that so privilege. Do you, do you think you know some partners wouldn't recognise that that's a right? Yeah, I think there's because you know intimate relationships are so complex, and you know they do trigger our primal, um, archaic, really old kind of uh, blueprint really from when we were babies so a lot of stuff that comes out in our intimate relationships is really kind of crazy right, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's kind of really um, it can seem really immature because actually you know in my view and in my the way I think about these things as a psychodynamic psychotherapist is that you know you are you are reaching back to you know the earliest blueprints of how we do relationships so there can be some some, some kind of um, 
fiery emotions that come out that, uh, that, that are quite irrational. But again, this is why I say try to be tolerant of each other, both for the victim, yeah. if, if he or she can, and for the partner who's struggling with this new information, really. So we might not be coming from our best adult place when dealing yeah. with these things. We might be actually regressing back to yeah. you know, a, a, a more, a less resourced, yes. more vulnerable childhood state. I, exactly. And and this is why it, it needs to be, you know, we need to have patience for one another in these sorts of disclosures because they're so raw and painful yeah. um, that, you know, anything can happen in a way. Um, and again, just to emphasize again, I would say that what's super important for the couple, if one has been abused and, and deciding to disclose and dealing with that, is give yourself time, if you can, to not feel if that, you know, the abuser, as it were, is still alive, to not go into family dynamics and family uh, scenarios like dinners and things that where you're mm. invited to something. Don't feel rushed, you know, no. decline inv invitations yeah. if you have to, for for as long as you need to as a Keep couple. Keep yourself safe. Exactly. Keep yourself safe. And, you know, think about this. You want to preserve your relationship. You know, the worst thing for someone who's decided to, to continue a relationship with the abuser, you know, you, you want that to be over you want to be able to draw a line under what happened to you in the past so that your current relationships are no longer impacted in the same way and that it doesn't become a bond that destroys your relationship and you'll need to make your own choice and now I'm speaking kind of to the victim as it were they, they will need to make their own decision around to what extent they're going to uh, kind of prioritize their relationship over their family of origin for some for some survivors it's a case of cut my family of origin sod that i'm done you know you've hurt me enough and yes i love you but it doesn't mean i have to see yeah. you and have have that intimacy that we once had you know that's gone at dead and buried and sometimes i think victims don't know that they can take that option that no, you know you because don't they have haven't to... really their autonomy has been eroded from the very beginning exactly yeah. but, but the truth is we, we we are born into our families there's nothing we can do about that we it's it's whatever luck or luck of the draw if you like uh, obviously spiritual uh, meanings aside i'm keeping this really simple here but uh, you know the the point is you know you can choose a family when you get to a point when you're an adult and you have more autonomy over your life and you're no longer the child that you once were or all the teenager or the adolescent that, that was abused you can make a new decision and and i think sometimes uh in, certainly in my experience with patients, sometimes it's almost like, oh, I never even thought about just cutting cutting my mother off or right. whatever. Yeah, you know, yeah. But I didn't know that was an option. Exactly. And yeah. I'm not advocating for that necessary. I'm just saying that just keep that in mind because your relationship is, is your future. Your relationship with your partner yeah. is potentially your future, you know? Your yeah. family of origin is where you come from. And it's entirely up to you how you how you balance and juggle the two things. And it might be that you have to make a, a, a kind of more black and white decision about whether whether you choose your family or your or your partner and how much contact you have. So, because I want to bring this this episode to a mm. close because it's getting cold <laughs> and uh, I can see the sun's got brighter and it's burning yeah. out even with the sunglasses wow. the, New, the New Zealand sun that doesn't have the protection of the ozone layer is burning out your retinas as we speak <laughs> well, I so, hope so just to, to start just to, to maybe crystallise a few of the points that, that you've made what, I'm, what I think I'm hearing and, and tell me if this is mm. if this is right is that uh, the person that is the victim or the survivor of the abuse um, needs to call the shots absolutely every time always that's the golden rule and for partners you know i'm sorry but that is the rule right so you know you always have to be guided by what your partner feels comfortable with because what we don't ever want to do with someone who's already experienced trauma and abuse is to feel like we are now coercing them and and, it, and mm. you believe it or not it's very easy for these things to be reenacted even with the best will in the world yeah. we can suddenly find that we're in these dynamics where we're kind of echoing back to what happened in the way that we're either pressuring somebody oh why didn't you tell me or you know you've got to tell this person now or those kinds of conversations yeah. you know please just be sensitive to that um and try and avoid it and you know what if you're struggling get help get support you don't have to deal with this stuff on your own there are people like myself and mark who this is what we do day in day out and we 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 do support and um 
help our patients and clients navigate this kind of really, really difficult stuff all the time. So you don't have to suffer alone, okay? So yeah, do reach absolutely. out to us, you know, if you, and just if you to, need to. to revisit some of the analogies that you use. So, so mm. previously you talked about how disclosing the abuse is like maybe picking a scab. Yes. Um, for the victim, and, yeah. A poor, you know, an unhelpful response from the partner to the victim is is like actually kind of um, taking a knife out and deepening the wound. Potentially, yes, absolutely, yeah. yeah. And yeah. you know, you, yeah, it, it, it's something you you need to keep in mind that not everyone recovers from this kind of disclosure. So you don't want to be that statistic that doesn't recover. No. So you know, you, every conversation you have has to be with the intention of how how can I be most respectful, most kind most sensitive and you know take responsibility for your feelings your your partner who's been traumatized by abuse whether that's childhood adult where whenever that happened is not responsible for your feelings you are if, yeah. as the partner so it's important that you deal with them it's not to say you have to close off from your partner I mean, don't misunderstand me here but it is important not to uh you know just kind of let that kind of gush out on, yeah. on the person who's kind just of explosive reaction yeah to, really to kind helpful. of bear that in mind and, and keep in mind that you yourself may need support discreet you know individually away from from your partner you know and, and as, as needed space to process what you've what you've learned um, and there's no, there's that is really understandable there's nothing wrong in that there's no shame in that for goodness yeah, sake it's not a big ask it's not a big ask it's really yeah. okay if you feel like whoa I, I can't deal with this you know try and hold that in your mind and take that to someone safe where you can talk about that rather than dumping it on your partner who's disclosed this thing and, and I'm and saying some really difficult things here we, we're all human we all sometimes say the wrong thing but these are just guidelines for anyone who's watching who feels like oh my gosh yeah this is me and what do I do you know so just remember that you know your feelings are your own your partner has been brave in telling you something very very painful perhaps the worst thing that's ever happened to them they've disclosed to you so they've placed you in a great position of trust and honor and it's about how you re how you respond to that with love and compassion and um, and taking care of your feelings it's not that you're not allowed to have feelings you are mm. you're allowed to have every feeling under the sun you might want to really go and kill the person you might want to make a plan to kill them just don't do it <laughs> you know but yeah. that all of that is okay all of that is in the realms of what to be expected so if you're feeling murderous and you think oh my god i never knew i was a psychopath don't panic you're not a psychopath you're just having a normal reaction to some traumatic news and it's important then to contain that somehow and that might be talking to someone you trust and love and absolutely know is safe to disclose again with your partner's consent to talk about it with in a safe space it might be coming to see someone like myself or mark as a therapist and professionally getting help for yourself it might be journaling, it might be going to see your priest or your spiritual advisor and, and working out a way to process this, the magnitude of what, what's been disclosed to you without further potentially harming or hurting your, your partner. That's really important. Yeah, so, yeah, that's yeah. Right. that makes perfect sense. Right. So uh, we will be back again shortly and we will uh, we'll start to get into the retroactive jealousy yeah sort of thing. i'll just so. say goodbye guys i'm sorry oh. it's been so bright i haven't <laughs> <laughs> um yeah. you know i'm a real person it's not like uh what was that mad max when we were kids artificial intelligence yeah. robot that i've created exactly. <laughs> so so yeah we'll see you soon back soon <laughs>